That's actually how I've tried to keep it as that. Okay. No one yeah. calls you DJ Cosmo? <laughs> no, not that many actually. A lot of people just say Miss Cosmo and it works out better that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. You look beautiful. Thank you so much. Way. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us yes. today. Yes, yes, yes. You know what amazes me? I mean, you started off wanting to be a singer. Yes. What happened? Um, it's one of those things where you realize later on in life that you don't really have the talents to project <laughs> and to <laughs> and to all the notes. So Ahmed, it was just me realizing that I love music, but singing was not necessarily where my talents lie. Um, so obviously I had to just like look around and see within the industry how I could put myself in, yeah. and that's obviously when I decided then to do the jump from singing to DJing. So. Yeah. Who told you you don't have talent, by the way? My mom. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need those honest parents in your life just to let you know, like, good girl, I love you, but uh, not quite. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does your mom sing? Uh, no, she doesn't. I mean, she sings around in the house, but she doesn't necessarily have, like, that type of a voice either. But, I mean, I've got a musical family nonetheless. I mean, my dad's a huge jazz fan. Um, my mom likes a lot of R&B and dance type of music. Um, so it's always been that type of a culture that I grew up in. We'd always like be a vibe or like yes. music or when we go into school, there'd always be something that we're playing in the car. So it's just the type of atmosphere that I grew up in. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Mm. <laughs> you studied uh, finance. Yes, I did. And then what made you change? To go into DJing. Jeez. It was one of those, like, I obviously loved the music and I was always singing along. But for my to actually start studying finance was because I was good at accounting at school and I needed something to obviously, like, keep me um, safe. It was more of, like I said, a safety net. So going into school, you look at what type of careers that everybody else is jumping into. Mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, well, maybe this is where I could put my strengths into as well. Um, I graduated, I got my degree, I went on to go and work at a bank for about four years. But when I was there, I still just, you know, like that, that monkey that, that always still on your, yes, on your back. Yes. So for me, I was just like, okay, well, what else can I do? While I was still working at the bank, um, that's when I then looked into taking on DJ lessons. Because I was like, okay, well, this is something clearly that I've got a knack for. Because uh, my friends always used to love my CDs. I used to make like compilations, you know, like you'd buy a CD and you only like about two or three songs on that CD. So I would take those three songs, take songs from different albums as well compile them onto certain CDs, onto like a blank CD and then I play those in my car so my friends used to enjoy my CDs, they'd ask me to bring them all the time um, and then yeah it just became a thing where my friends were like yeah you're really good at this, you've got an ear for music so at the time obviously I knew I couldn't sing so that's not the avenue I could choose, I couldn't rap either so <laughs> <laughs> I could at least try to sing, sing but the, the rap is horrible, horrible. Um, um, so, so that's, that's when I thought, okay, well, maybe I can look into DJing. Here's something, here's a different avenue. I'm always out mm -hmm. in the clubs anyway, so I might as well yeah. get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I then took on my DJ lessons, and from there it's just been one step after the other. And obviously, just, uh, and then I obviously got to a point where I looked at both of my careers and I was like, okay, well, I'm DJing and I'm working. Yeah. It got to a point where one of my jobs was actually suffering because I wasn't giving 100% of my attention. Oh, yes. You know, so. I was either giving 50% on the DJ, 50% on the work, which means I'm not excelling, I'm not supposed to, I'm not doing what I needed to do. So I had to make a choice. And at that choice, I was like, look, I'm only young once. I can mm -hmm. always go back into corporate. I can always go back into Yolo. finance. <laughs> um, so, YOLO. <laughs> and I jumped. <laughs> and I started DJing full time. And this is where I am now. I'm quite happy with my decision. Yeah. How tough was it getting into the industry? Um, geez, it was a little difficult in the beginning. I think also because there's not that many female DJs, so just the concept of it was a little foreign to everybody else. Um, but I think for me, it was just a perseverance to constantly push. I mean, there's been time and time again where I've decided, let me just quit this and just like, go back into a safer place where I know oh, I'm yeah. getting money at the end of the month and it's safer. Um, but it was just, it was always just me always having to knock on the doors, knock on the doors. Even though they kept closing in my face, I had to make sure that I made somebody pay attention. Um, so it was extremely difficult for me to convince people that I could do what I was doing and that I was mm -hmm. good at it. 
But eventually, when I did get the opportunity to try and shine, that's when things started changing, shifting for me a little bit. Um, when I joined YFM, I was doing YTKO. Um, it was just a, a mixed show at the time on YFM. Once a week, Tuesdays, I was doing a 30 minute live mix. So it was part of that, like obviously pushing, speaking to the right people. Eventually, they called me, YFM called me, and they were like, listen, we hear that you're a female DJ, we're trying to grow new, fresh type of talent. Maybe you could be one of those people that you bring on at Y. And that's how I jumped into YFM. And then obviously from there, everything else just exploded. Because people started hearing about me, people started knowing who I was. And then I obviously started paying attention to my brand as well. But at the time, I was also still working. So it was just a little tough to like try and shift and change here and there. But it was cool. I mean, it was worth the experience. I was working for seven days a week. It was tiring. Mm. Monday to Friday. Okay. Monday into the office. Friday, I live late. Friday night, I'm in the club up until Sunday and then back again on Monday. It was. Oh. <laughs> what, what exactly were you doing until YFM got that buzz that she, she is actually a master? Um, of I think it was, like I said, it was me always being in the club. So for me, mm -hmm. I would always be out. I'd always be speaking to the DJs who were out there who were playing. I was speaking to the promoters who were hosting the parties. Yes. I was speaking to the my friends who were in the industry as well who were like, okay well maybe we can give her an opportunity but it wasn't that it's not like i just all, all of a sudden got like headlining spot no yes. i would have to start like everybody else where i would play the opening set yeah. sometimes i was playing for the bar staff while they were still cleaning up or maybe even if they're closing the club so i would be playing just for the people as they're sweeping up the floors yeah no one possibly could have heard me during those times um but it was just a, a gradual progression as i kept going with my career to obviously say no i will do it even if i have to play for free those are the type of sacrifices that you need to make in, the, in this industry to actually say believe in me trust in my talent see what i'm capable of i do want this badly and i'm willing to take the bad the, the bottom of the barrel to actually get to a stepping stone where sure. people start paying attention so it was just all of that grinding behind the scenes that eventually got me to where i was and you are the first lady, really. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Channel O, how was yes. that experience? Oh, geez, that was really cool as well. Um, how I got onto Channel O was, uh, Channel O was doing these things on a Friday where they would have celebrity basement. So basically, yes. they'd have like guest DJs that would come in and do mixes. So one of my DJ friends, um, who had done a, a, a basement before, had suggested to the programs um, to the the producer of of basement to say hey here's a DJ she's also mm -hmm. trying herself out uh, maybe you could give her a chance she also just wants to come in and just do one recording and obviously at the time it's just oh, it's just one recording you come in you do a thing people forget about you when you're done um, but the manager of the channel after seeing me doing my my, my first basement mix was like here's something a little different we've never had a female on before we're looking for new talent to channel O to be residents um, would you like that opportunity so after I had done my first basement that's when they called me in and they were like we like your difference we like the fact that you're female we like that you play hip-hop we like that you're doing something different which is a little bit fresh as well and that's when they took a chance on me as well and and that's how I jumped into channel O which is really cool so before all this what, what's been your source of strength um, it's just been the love of music. I think that's been what it has been. Because um, at the end of the day, I mean, the reason why people love music is because music is like a euphoria. It's basically like a place that you just, that you run away to so that you can just feel free and you can let your stresses out. So for me, it's always been, but I love the music. As tough as it can be, I can say, oh, I'm too tired to get up and go to the club. Oh, I don't want to go there. I don't feel like facing people. But the minute you press play, and you see the smile on people's faces because you've played their favorite song that just makes it all the more worth it so for me it's always been the music and that's what's been my passion to actually get me through so even when you're having a really a down the moment most horrible no get away <laughs> no way whatsoever i mean there were, i mean when i was double timing when i was still working and i was djing you can imagine how tiring it was i would have woken up that day at five o'clock in the morning yeah. to get ready for work um, tread through the traffic to actually get to the office, be in the office the entire day. I'd probably only knock off at work maybe said like 5, 6 o'clock p.m. Yeah. So I've been awake since 5 a.m. Then still have to go home, freshen up, and then go to the club. Days like that are tiring, number one. Number two, if it's a rainy day, when all you want to do is just sit at home. Oh my gosh, you just want to shoot yourself like, no, I want to have to go to the club. But you have to do it because that's what you love and that's what you do. So yeah. it's always been about the passion for me. And the glam? Has the glam gone too? Um, 
Well, look, I mean, I mean, the glam aspect of it is like it's it's, it's part of the brand building. So you kind of have to fall into that if you want to portray yourself as a certain individual within this industry. Um, so, I mean, I did get into it. I had to get into it. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I mean, I'm a girl, so most girls like looking pretty. We like doing our hair. We like putting on makeup. Mm-hmm. We know we like putting on heels. So those things were slightly come, already came naturally, but for yeah. me, I had to amplify it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have gotten into into the groove of things, and it's pretty cool. So, I mean, it's fun to play dress up. I don't know any girl who doesn't like playing dress up. So it's fun, yeah. What would you say are the major challenges that you've faced? Um, being taken seriously as a girl, I think that was just the one thing. Um, because at the end of the day, I always have to, I always have to prove myself 110 percent more than the boys do. I always have to look the part. I always have to have the skill. I always have to know what I'm talking about. Um, and 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 I always have to make sure that people don't doubt whatever I'm doing. Because the yeah. minute they doubt me, they completely cancel me out. As opposed to the guys, they could be like, oh no, there was that one thing that you said. Oh, it's fine. We'll push it aside. So with a girl, I always have to be on top of my game, 110. percent I always have to mix properly. I always have to, um, I always have to portray myself within hip hop really well. And if I were to decide to even get into a different sphere, maybe even start making music or whatever the case may be, I'll be scrutinized a little bit harder than the guys, purely because I'm a girl and this is not a girls' club. It's a boys' club. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. Um, it's been tough, but I think I've gotten to a point where the guys actually respect me for what I do because they know that I will deliver when they do mm-hmm. ask me to come and perform, you know, so, yeah. Do you have any people that you're mentoring? Um, I don't have anybody that I'm mentoring as such, mm-hmm. but I do, I do obviously try and do my bit here and there. I mean, I have this, this feature on my show, uh, on, my, on my radio show called The Rap Factor. So it's not necessarily me mentoring as, as, as a full-on person who's, who's taking on their career but with that feature I basically send out a beat and, and try and get MCs to send back maybe say like um, 16 bars or whatever of their best rap lines that they could freestyle over the beat and whoever the winner is at the end of the month will then get an opportunity to record with with, with a, um, uh, a prominent producer here in South Africa so because I've obviously got those contacts within the hip-hop space so I would speak to someone maybe say like 37 MPH who's worked with the likes of JR or Kuli Chana Double HP or maybe I speak to like a Tweezy who did half of AKA's album or a PH who does a lot of Cash Times music and, and with Kuli Chana as well so for them for the the, the the artists themselves that is an opportunity that oh, they yes. would never get from anybody mm-hmm. so I've kind of basically taken that on as one of my projects that I work on and a lot of my winners are, are, are usually people who come from different sides of South Africa so a lot of them come from the Eastern Cape some come from Cape Town others from Durban a majority of them have never been on a plane before so that's already an experience oh, or they've never worked with a huge producer like that and they yeah. actually get to have that experience and say they've recorded a song with that producer and they've learned something on that day so that's just one of the things that I'm working on obviously once I I get my foot around it. I'll amplify it a little bit more, and then it will it will get a little bit bigger. But it's it's still a small project for now. Making a difference. Yes. <laughs> so what would you say? You know, where have you actually been through certain times in the industry where you just go like, ah, uh, can I just leave? This? <laughs> really? Um, it's. I mean, there has been times. I mean. I think the toughest part about this industry is, is, is the constant hustle. You always have to be on top of your game. So the hustle part of it is the fact that you need to make sure you're always getting booked, number one. Number two, people are aware of you and they want to pay you. Being a debt collector wasn't part of, <laughs> wasn't part of the plan. But you really have to constantly chase people for your money. Jeepers. Sometimes you're just like, can I just go back to corporate where no, on the 25th I'm getting money and it's over, you know? Um, yeah. But that's, I, I think that's the only part where I, I always cringe because I'm like, am I going to get my money worth? Am I going to get the payment? But outside of that, I mean, like I said, the joy is always within the actual being out there, Doing being with job. people. Because yes. I'm a people's person, so I like interacting with people, seeing what music they like to hear. Um, mm-hmm. Playing for the crowd is what I, I enjoy doing as well. 
So yeah, I think that just the tough part is just a constant hassle, always being ahead of the game, trying to make sure that I'm always being fresh and I'm staying relevant as well. Because yeah. I mean, I could be the cool person last year, but the next year they might not care about yeah. me. You know what I mean? So I have to always make sure that I'm doing something to stay relevant, to stay in people's eyes and ears. Yeah. True. And what are you doing actually to stay relevant? Um, I guess for me, it's always like looking for the next best thing. So. Mm-hmm. I was doing my radio show, well I'm still doing my radio show now on 5FM, yes. um, I was on Channel O doing the, the, the basement stuff, now I'm getting into an eventing space, so mm-hmm. I've got this property called Miss Cosmos Fun House, which is basically like a chill house party vibe, I'm a little nostalgic because I grew up in that era, always having to go to house parties and stuff, so that's one of the properties I'm working on, I'm working on a compilation as well, so all of the stuff is still like behind the scenes type of work. But um, by the time festive hits and, and everything is, is has got the ball rolling, you'll definitely hear a little bit more about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything you'd like to say to the ones that are upcoming, the women? Hard Especially. work <laughs> and um, hard work and perseverance. You need to know what your end goal is. I think that's the important part. If you don't know what your end goal is, then you've got nothing to work towards. Um, and if you and if you're constantly pushing, but then you're not too sure how you want to direct yourself you need to have some sort of direction yeah. so hard work and goal perseverance are the other are three things i think that that have kept me abreast within this industry i've mm-hmm. always wanted to know what i wanted to do i want to be a dj i want to be good at what i do and i need to stay within hip-hop i want to excel within the hip-hop space those are my end goals how am i going to do it what, how, um, who's going to help me get there mm-hmm. am i constantly going to keep going or am i going to exactly. sit back and expect somebody yeah. else to do the work for me do you know what i mean mm-hmm. this is not an easy game to play so you need to make sure that you're in it for the for 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 the long haul um but yeah it's fun at the end of the day but <laughs> it's not easy um but also one thing i think that i've kind of also told myself is outside of the hard work i also need to play just as hard because i need to make sure I release some of the stresses as well because sometimes when you get bogged down by constantly going you never get a chance to sit down and enjoy and smell the roses so you need to be able to do that as well have you had any crazy fan experiences uh i haven't had like stupid fan experiences but i mean like i mean i'll I'll get the, the 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 typical when i go out and i play somewhere at an event maybe when i walk in it's always the funny part because most people don't recognize who i am so if i walk in then i'll be like okay she's just some girl until i come on and i play and then they're like hey actually and then i play my set and they enjoy it and they have fun yeah. only leaving that's when everybody wants to take a picture they want to pose they want to oh. make sure so it makes it a little difficult to leave a party but uh, outside of that no i haven't really had anything crazy Not happen to yet me. Well, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Let's hope so. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us. It was really lovely to yes. have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And viewers, thank you so much for watching.